The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Uh, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. This is Basil Chaplin sitting in for the one and only Larry Pesavento. Um, and we're looking at a very interesting market. You've got the dollar actually rallying a little bit. Gold hasn't done very much. S&P is down. We'll go through these right now. So here we go. We've got the ESM. That is the June contract under a peak, a possible peak E. Now, I'm going to go through this now just because I think it's so important. If To understand my methodology, you need to just know a very simple rule. In the Chapman Wave, the objective is to go from the lowest, most identifiable low bar, nearly count E successively higher peak, four peaks higher, alphabetically in sequence, peak A, B, C, and D. That's where other things can happen. Doesn't have to, but that's where other things can happen. You can get a deeper uh, retracement. You can get a recycle to the upside. You get a chap wave instant restart, which will take you to at least another four peaks higher. And that's why it's so important. You can go to a G, the seventh highest peak, just like on the piano. You know, you get the seven notes. The eighth note is the octave repeat. Now let's get that out of the way, and I'll show you what we're looking at. In my methodology, there's another technique that I've been working on for quite some time. I'd say over two years practicing it every day, uh, trying to build some uh, some kind of meaningful set of parameters that I can follow. And in this case, there's a really good example just right here of one, two, three, four, five moves up to a peak F, uh, to a peak D, which coincided with a Chapman Wave 5 at 2397.25 on the 1st of March comes down in a very quick 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the downside to 2317. Um, that was mid-March. And then it runs up, pulls back, and then makes another low. But that other low is higher. And that essentially says that you can, you can consider that that 5 started to move up. They went to a 1, 2, 3, Four, and on the French election evening, Sunday night, squeaked to a new all-time high, 2403.75 in the June contract. That is a potential five. The MACD isn't close to how strong it was when it went to the high in March the 1st. Stochastic then was actually f about to fail. And right now, we've got the same kind of potential turn down. Is it going to be a turn down that, in fact, impacts the markets? I have to tell you something. In the NQ, I'll go to the continuous contract for the moment, we have that very uh, same aspect. We've got an F slash D at 56.5. I'm just trying to get this exactly right. Is that correct? 5687.75. I knew that had changed. I just couldn't remember the numbers. So that 5688. 7.75. So we have the potential, if there is no new high this morning or this afternoon, going about 5687.75 in the NASDAQ continuous contract. I've got to watch this real closely. The MACD is still very strong. The stochastic is 97%. The unbalanced volume, this blue line, is the one, is, there are two clues. And the one is that the unbalanced volume, that is Granville, Joe Granville's technique from way, way back where all it's a cumulative addition of an up close and you add the volume if there's an up close and you subtract the volume if there's a down close and that's and i i love it in chart i used to do this hand charting and all on the dow stocks i mean i don't know how long it took me in the morning when i was still having a dual career of a professional musician and a marketeer uh, but i finally i loved it when they they Produced as a 
chart formation. And this is a leg D, a possible peak D right here in the on balance volume in the daily. The weekly charts are still very good. Monthly charts are very strong. And the 120 minute chart right here has made a peak D, that peak D we were talking about with lousy technicals. So we're going to see what happens here. You've got NVIDIA, which is impacting the SMHs. Otherwise, the SMHs were really struggling. That's the semiconductor uh, index. Um, now what we're looking at is the chance, and now, now I can go through all these things and I'll go through them in a slightly shorter uh, time frame. If you look at the, the 10 minute chart of the E-mini, it's just gone. There's a pattern that I call the lowercase h goes to a lowercase m. And it basically looks like this. You come down, that's the back of the h. And then there's a little mini arch formation. It looks just like a lowercase h. And it might or might not test the left side low. There's a whole, there are three sets of rules that go with that particular technique. But very often you find that there isn't enough downside pressure, but there really isn't enough upside pressure. And all that happens is that you then see the lowercase h goes to a lowercase m. Why do I say lowercase? Because it, it sometimes is the inverted v. This is just an arch formation. And now you've got your peak e, not a d, but an e, in the 10-minute chart, and it's pulling back. So I just want you to say the parameters are real simple for me. A, cl a close on a 10-minute basis above 23.9450 would suggest you can go even higher in the E-mini. This is on the very short term. We're looking at the day chart. And on the downside, at 23.90.75, down 250 right now, I would even say that a close under 2389, just a point and a little bit below, and you could start to retest the 2388. 23, I would have to say that today, the level to watch what I said to my subscribers on my opening call, my daily newsletter, was when I sent out the chart of the, in fact, it looks just like this. It's this chart right here, and I always do that. So you can see the daily has got this U formation, not a U, U formation, but U formation, which has gone just a tad higher than the previous high. And it's starting to show a little bit of weakness, uh, closing in the 2409s to 2411 area in the next day or two would be very positive. But this cup formation in the weekly chart of the June E-mini says that the MAGD, the moving average convergence divergence, could very easily deflect low. That's what I'm actually thinking is going to happen. And we'll start to see chop, chop, chop to the downside. 23.65 is the weekly major support. And this is the 120-minute chart, made a peak E at 24.375. And now you've got lower highs and lower lows. And what is that? That's the definition of a down mode. And higher highs and higher higher lows is really the definition of an up mode, no matter what the time frame. Now let's get out of this. And I want to go through a couple of things because the, the session hasn't started yet. I want you to show you that gold had the opportunity with that leg D, remember D's, we watched D's very closely up and down, to pull, to, to have a stronger bounce. And look, what I said yesterday was that the MACD, the moving average convergence, uh, divergence, Larry doesn't use this, Larry uses Fibonacci, uses Gartley's, and um, with the expansion, the butterflies, you could actually see that. Yeah, I don't want to get into it right now. I just want to say that my technique, the arch formation, the uppercase A going straight up and straight down is really what we're looking at. MACD is still very weak, and the stochastic is trying to turn from 5%, but it better make a very strong V-shape to 12% to get the, the gold contract from 1225 to 1238 above the 9 period moving average. Basil Chapel sitting here for the one and only Larry Pizzarenta. I'll be right back after these important messages. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks. We're back. And uh, Basil Chapman's in for Larry Pesavento. I do the 11 o'clock show every day, 11 o'clock till noon, called the Tiger Technicians Hour. So it's my pleasure to be sitting in for Larry. And as I say, the gold, let me just show you this pattern right here. You see this arch formation or inverted V? There's a couple of things going on inside. It's what I call a Chapman wave stalk leg formation. Uh, it goes straight up, and then it has an oval, must be oval, can't be rectangle, an oval formation. Breaks out to the upside. That's the neck. The head is when it's really the beak. The beak comes down. The beak, if it takes out the body and closes under it, that's a really negative thing, and it can go quite a bit lower than that. Now it's got the arch formation. And this, These two... Uh, Moving averages, the red is the slow, the green is the fast, it's called the nine period differential. And in the slow stochastic, look what's happened here. You've got um, you've got the stochastic trying to turn from 5%. It did that once before and did a real nice turn to the upside. <clears throat> At that point, you had the stochastic uh, rally sharply with the price and the MACD closed very sharply high. The green soared above the red line. You're not getting that yet. It could happen, but it's not going to happen for this moment. And we're looking at the dollar, and the dollar really, the, the strength, even though it's down a penny at 99.53, it's had this very strong leg A to the upside. The last arch, for, look, there are two arch formations. Just they repeat. You either have, you only have three patterns. It's a straight line up or down. It is an arch or an inverted V, so it's part A. And B, but it's still the same thing up and down, or down and up, and it's a cup or a V shaped formation. So it's either straight line, cup, or arch. And that's all I look at. And what's really important about it within that context, I like to look for the strength, the internal strength. In this particular instance, the dollar is above the nine period exponential moving average. There's a faster moving average that's just a little bit under that, which is a positive right now. Stochastic had a good move up. Um, it's at 34%. I would much prefer to see that there's um, maybe a sideways move holding 99.24 and then a pop into the 99.88 area or higher. It could do it today. That'll be good. But an A and then a B to the upside 
with the MACD and stochastic uh, moving higher, and the histogram, this little 0% line right here, is at 0 0.06, so it's just turned positive. But this is really within the context. Look, I, when, you, when you learn how to draw trend lines, it's real easy. You take trend lines from the most important peaks. I go to the, to the top of the candle. Sometimes I'll use the body of the candle. But look, I didn't have to. Have a, have a look at how beautiful this trend line is. How do these trend lines know where to stop? Well, my contention is that it is human nature that we're looking at. We are looking at a fractal of human nature, and human nature doesn't change. And that that bigger move in gold represented a bigger, a more optimistic outlook from human nature people. And this one was a much shorter one. And what happens is that the effort that it takes to get to that line is the same effort that it takes to get to that line, except it's of shorter duration. And at that particular point, it, it, it fizzles out. And it starts to pull back. The pullback on the downside is not as great as it was initially when you pull back in gold from the 2nd of March at 102.26. I'm sorry, the dollar. I meant to say the dollar. Um, but it pulled back, then had a sideways move, and then went to a lower low. So in the end, it, it added up to the same thing. What's important here is you see this 200 period exponential moving average right here, this orangey colored. A moving average. You see the blue one, which is the simple moving average or smooth moving average. Um, have a look at this. Uh, and the nine period, they're all coming together here. So the dollar has a lot of support in the 99s. If it takes it out, all of that becomes terrible resistance. It's going to really struggle. And that's why it's so important. We're looking at gold right now. And if you look at gold, it's below both of those two moving averages. That's now a repellent line at the 1245 area, starting at 1236, 1236, 1245, 1249, and then uh, 1260. So there's a lot of resistance. However, here you're looking at the lows in the stochastic, and it could flatten out. But if it turns and goes from the 5% area into the 17% area, you will see a very sharp snap to the upside. And my suspicion is that this is the moment where we're going to see a lot of testing of all what I call for my subscribers this morning. I said the four L's, Dixie, Bondi, Vixie, and uh, Dolly. Dolly, Goldie, oh, Goldie. So that's gold, dollar, bonds, and the VIX. And where is the VIX right now? The VIX is at an historical low. I've been hearing people, I think, misrepresented uh, to a certain extent. The VIX is at 10.05. It's up 9, 9, um, 9 cents, 0.90%. Um, and it's made a trough D if there's no new low today. And there you've got a W formation in the, in the stochastic at 6.72%. And the MACD, the histogram, is starting to improve. But wait a minute. If you go back, you will see that everyone's talking about a 20-year uh, VIX. But no, no, no. It's from 2006. So that's an 11 year, 9.39. We haven't taken that out yet. Yesterday was 9.56. If you go back to 1993, I believe it is. Let's see, 1993. Uh, coming up, coming up. There it is. 9.31 was in November of 1993. And in each of these cases, the low that was made in December of 2006 and the low that was made in November of 1993 suggested that there was a base forming. And when that base was concluded, and I'm not talking time because it took a, a, two years or more, but over a period of time, that 931 low and the 939 low, and we'll see about the low that was just made of 9.56. And I said, 90, yep, 9.56. What happens over a period of time? Because it basically it formed a base, and eventually it went to peak A, B, C, D, E, pulls back and goes to another A, B, C, D. And the E was the Russian financial crisis at 45.74 back in uh, September, October of 1998. So uh, the history of this is that once it makes those 9.30s, you might flatten out, but there is a period where it starts to climb. And the, the other one went from the December 2006 low to 89.53, the October 2008 bank crisis high, peak D. They don't often go to Ds. When they do, it's really a big timeout after that. It was peak C minus, the last one. That was the China and domestic 
crisis back in uh, August of 2015 at 53.29. All right, I thought I just wanted to do a little bit of a history lesson there. Now, let's quickly go through a couple of things. I wanted to show you the uh, corn, corn, as we say here in the Boston area, corn, corn uh, made a peak C minus up in the monthly chart back in August of 2012, plunges down, and that. That was, let me tell you, that was, a, that was high. It was 847.5. And, a half. and uh, the most recent low was at 338.5. A half gets cut in half. And we had a bounce to a peak B. And now it's just going sideways at 367. So at 367 and 6 eighths right now, up one and a quarter, um, corn is making uh, peak A, B, C, made a peak C1, C2. It's pulling back. It's just trading in a, in a trading band right now. Just a narrow, a narrow range. And we will go to um, soy. So this is soybeans. Uh, made a peak D. And now it's just holding firm. And I want you to look at SLSB. I'll look at it when we get back because that's sugar. And sugar better move from here. This is done a one-to-one -one in a chap wave parallel one-to-one extent. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Everyone, we're about to open up here in the market. Dow's down 53, S&P's down $1.50. Um, hmm, fascinating. Wow. Um, and we've got, there it is, leg D. I just drawn this during the break in the two-minute chart. Um, I drawn the cup formation, went to peak C1, C1, C2, and I expect there could be a, a D. It just went to the D. I'm going to put in a 
down arrow for here. The two minute chart, here's the S&P, watching it real closely. Okay, I was talking about sugar. And there's a technique that I developed a long time ago called the Chapman Wave one to one uh, extension. What does it mean? Basically, what it means is there's a move that goes down. It's a straight line move in this case in sugar. In the weekly chart from the peak D back in September of 2016, I'll give you the number, but since it's a continuous contract, it's the date that is exact. It's the chart pattern that's exact. It's the price that's wrong because it gets smoothed out. 2414 is the high. You probably you could have a different uh, number in a month's time because the contract is this is called the July contract and that could change. So it comes straight down and then it bounces. There's a technique that I developed where I take the um, take the angle and the price. I draw a straight line and I'm able in this particular uh, program of trade station to go new parallel and just go click. I take that. I want something that represents exactly from that high to that low, the same angle. And I put it in and I put it in a long time ago right here. And I said, there's a one to one. And that should take us from the high that was made back in the week of February the 10th in sugar down towards. And at that point, I just said towards the 15 area because that would be a one to one. Well, the low was 15.24. So that's the weekly chart. That's the bigger move. That's the that is the, um, the the larger tide. But within that, you can get the little waves that are swirling, swirling around. You can get big spikes to the upside. And the, the last spike failed at an A minus before it failed at a B minus. Now it's an A minus. Now we've already started a brand new little mini A right here. And that says that the stochastic has improved. The MACD, uh, sorry, the MACD has improved the stochastic is lower now than it uh, it's in other words the stochastic went down with the price i like it when there's a positive divergence and that says at 9.71 percent only the unbalanced volume is rallying i want the stochastic and the macd to rally together so if there's a, a takeout of the high of yesterday of 15.73 in the continuous contract sugar could bounce and that bounce could take it if the stochastic goes into the 11 or 12 percent area and stays there that says this is the bounce that could have more legs to the upside what does that mean it says this entire candle first the doji high of 1591 from the third would be an upside target if it takes that out that candle high of the second of may at, at 16.49 that would become a focal point but wait a minute we'll be talking about trend lines and stuff so let's just do this i'm going to take this trend line right here I'm going to take it from, I'm going to go back, I'm going to cut into that one. I just want the best fit, and the best, best fit says that this particular line, I'm going to make it green, and push over 16.01, would pierce this longer-term downtrend line that started from the high of the 16th of March, so we're almost a month, uh, we're almost two months later, haven't closed very often at all, in fact, haven't closed above the nine period moving average in all that time. Now I think it's close to doing that. So I'm watching sugar. I have no trade or anything. I'm just doing this because I know Larry loves to look at commodities when he can, etc. So I'm looking at the sugar and I'm saying, that's what I'm looking at. Now I want to do something else. The NQ, which is the NASDAQ 100 E mini continuous contract, is down 275. I'm sorry, folks. I have news for you. The NQ is actually down, is down three points. I'm going to take a picture because this is very rare. It hasn't happened too often. But the MACD is very strong. It's only now turning down. You can see by the histogram, these little lines are coming down. And that says that the distance between the nine period differential and the red slow moving average is getting closer. But that's all. It doesn't say it's negative. But what is, I mentioned this before, the unbalanced volume is pulling back and the, the stochastic at 97% is really strong. It's going to take time or severe price for the, um, for the NASDAQ to actually break under the nine period moving average of support of 5630. Now, I have to give a kudos to uh, Steve Rose, who's been calling this uh, beautifully in, in NDX. Uh, and congratulations. Great call. Um, now, what I'd like to do is to say 
that the 120 that the uh, that the E mini went to a peak E in the 10 minute chart had a sudden spike which I am going to call I have no choice right now but to call it F and it would become F slash B if there's a higher move above 2392.75 at this particular point the MACD is starting to turn down stochastic is weak we'll just see what happens here because I think chop 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 with a slightly downward bias is really what I'm looking at in the E-mini. Now, I want you to do this. The high-grade copper has been a concern of mine uh, for a little while in that it hasn't broken down, but it hasn't broken out. And it is so close. It's broken the 200-period moving average support at 251. It's trading at 2.50 right now. The arch formation, this is such a familiar formation. This is a peak F in the, let me get rid of this. Remove. I'm putting in a peak F right here with a little hat, a little inverted V. That says that's the, the residual. That was the um, internal high. This is the residual high. And that's going to be something that's very important. Most importantly, there's that H pattern. And that H pattern is becoming more ominous because the weekly chart, MACD, is very poor. Stochastic is trying to rally at 17% and it can't. And all I can say is that the support that's held for months of $2 and 2.4760 oh, in the continuous contract, if you go down to 2.6, close at 2.6, that is going to not be a good sign at all. Okay, now what I want to do is to look at the SMHs. The SMH, which should have gapped up, it did. Uh, it opened at 82.23. It's trading at 82.33 right now. One of the two reasons. One is NVIDIA, NVDA. I thought that NVIDIA was done in the monthly chart. It had made what was potentially a peak F top, and that the peak E top. And I said that that could be very serious. But I did want to say that the arch formation that was forming said that if there was a pop to the upside, it didn't make sense that NVIDIA, graphic processing, uh, workstations, games, mobile devices, they were in everything that's working at this particular time. The more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, I'm going to have to watch this. We'll have no position. I'm just going to treat it as a, as a watch in the kind of uh, looking at it closer as a semiconductor um, interpretation. And look what happened. A very big spike. And it's at the high, it's up 14 at 117.02. It hasn't taken out the all-time high of 120.92. Um, it's very close. So I'm watching this very closely. One of the things that's very important, oh, there's the break. One of the things that's very important is that the SMHs, the MACD is good, the stochastic is good, the unbalanced volume is really not all that good. So I'm watching to see what happens in this particular move. Because if the SMA, oh, we're talking about it, we won't rush. When we get back, we're talking about the semiconductor index, market back the semiconductor index at 8234, up 93 cents. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. We broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. <laughs> Hi everyone, Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. Dow's down 48, S&P's down 2. Um, this is going to be a, a, an interesting week because it is the week where we might, for the very first time, start to see that the, the NDX is running out of players on the upside. Um, it's going to be very important. What's, what is very important at this particular instance is that within the context of looking at the different sectors, it just seems real obvious if I'm looking through the Investor Business Daily Top, uh, I, I don't have time to go through the 50, but I do go through a lot. I'm seeing Ds and Es in daily charts. Monthly charts are still really good, but I am starting to see weakness in the shorter term. And that shorter term weakness should at some point uh, begin to uh, filter in to uh, the leading uh, indices. So I'm going to just do this because I, I lost some information. I'm just trying to get it back. There it goes. So within the context of the markets and individual stocks, DDD, which is a 3D systems, pointed out to me, uh, S&P in the den, uh, that it's acting very well still. This is one of uh, the stocks that we had focused on in my webinar, my last webinar. Uh, this and SSYS is uh, Stratasys Systems also doing very, very well, plus some others. I had also spoken about, um, and I can't remember if I did it during the, that show, or that there were going to be other sources of fads and fascinations within this, within this market context. And one of them would be um, uh, BTC, uh, Bitcoin. I had a couple of... Um, Folks, today, uh, is there no is there no trade yet in Bitcoin? Oh, well, it had a spectacular move at 233.50 yesterday. Leg F, I'm calling it F for now, a vertical parabolic move in the daily, a vertical parabolic move starting in the weekly and in the monthly. Bitcoin invent, I don't know what it's called, invert, invert, invent, investment trust, I guess. That's what it's called. And within that context, what I'm looking at is um, this is going to be in play. And I said to subscribers, I would love a very sharp pullback. It was on my list, and then I completely forgot the symbol, and then I forgot about it altogether. But now I've put it in the list on my daily list of things to look at. I think this is telling us that this market is rife and ready for sexy sectors to start to become real tradable entities. Ah, there it is. Okay, first trade uh, right here. 1,301 shares up, zero shares down um, in GBTC. 
So we'll see. Oh, it's down 50 cents. No, it's unchanged. <laughs> but I'm just suggesting to subscribers. I a, actually, I was very surprised. A couple of people emailed me to say they actually own it. Uh, what should they do? And my recommendation was, it depends on where you got in, but many of them got in quite a lot lower. And I'm suggesting try to keep a core position just as a core position, but take at least a half or two thirds off now, even if it goes high, either that or take immediately take one third off and let one third ride that if it goes above yesterday's high of two, three, four. No, I say I think I said two, three, eight. If it goes to two, three, eight, I believe I said two, three, eight. Let me just No, I, I haven't got time to check. But if it goes a little bit higher, then raise your stop. Be prepared to be stopped out of some part of your position. So get something off, take something off, and then keep. If you want to keep the core fine, but this is an incredible gain in a in a really volatile area because this thing can go. Look, yeah, back in was it January of 2017? Yeah, January the first week it hits a high of 152, and uh, within one week later it's trading at 108. That's a 50% decline. It really takes a dive when it takes a dive. In each one of those peak A, peak B, peak C, look how sharply it pulled back. Held the nine period moving average in the, in the monthly is at 135. In the weekly, it's at 155. In the daily, it's at 189. Oh, there we go. It's a little bit higher now, 235. <laughs> Extended leg F. So that's what I wanted to say. I thought I'd get to that. Good opportunity. I'll try to do it in my show as well in case someone's listening there. Um, who wasn't listening now will be listening then. So I wanted to now go through the TLT. The TLT, which is the Lehman 20-year T-bond fund, is up 36 cents at 120.98. It went to a trough E. What I said to subscribers this morning is the same thing, the Chapman Wave methodology of the uh, stalk leg formation, leg, body, neck, head, beak. When this concludes, when it completely concludes its down move, there could be a really sharp, a strong rally, and then you're on your own. You have to use other techniques. So this, the, the Chapman Wave stalk leg formation goes all the way through to the conclusion of the beak and the strong rebound. However, the low that was made, the body low, on the 31st of March at 120.21, yesterday's low was 120.40. We went under it and closed above it. That makes the 121.38 level of the two, tw nine period moving average really important. But really, it's this peak right here, the 3rd of May at 122.39. If it can't break above that, be careful. My thinking here is if the market is going to turn around and go down, what we'd be looking at <clears throat> is that the safety of bonds will come back into vogue and equities, money will come out of equities. So I am watching this very closely. Why? Because in the weekly chart, we've got the H pattern that goes to an M pattern, except that it took out the left side low, closed above, and it said, if that's the case, you could rally. You probably won't break above the previous high arch, but if you do, you have to hold above it for two candles, and then you go even higher. Well, the high was, 123.14 back the week of the 13th of January. It closed at 113, uh, sorry, 121, 123.47 the week of the 14th, and then at 123.54 the week of the 21st. And that says be careful because it's still active as a positive with the MACD holding well. And I'm suggesting to you, we'll keep an eye on the on bonds because if the bonds let me go to the actual bond contract right now, which is trading at 151 and 730 seconds. That's the same rule of thumb. You see this trend line resistance. You see the H pattern going. Now it's going to an M. But this turns out to be a really positive uh, pattern if you break the resistance. And in this case, if there's a close in bonds above one, let's go to 156. So it's about five points higher. If bonds go five points higher over the next three, four weeks, I think you're going to see the Dow now. I haven't gone to the Dow at all today. Now I'm going to go to the Dow. I think that the Dow has got a failure pattern involved. And that if it takes out the low that was made about six to five, six days ago, 20,847, not only does it start to fill in these gaps, but this whole candle right here with a low of 20,000, 723 and a high of 20,792. That breakout candle, gap one, gap two in the middle there. I, I don't want to circle it because it'll make, I'll, I'll circle it. Just I'll make a rectangle right there. That, that candle right there, 
it's going to become really important. Okay, so we've got a bunch of those things. What I do want to show you is uh, within, it was got silver, I didn't do silver. Now, what's really fascinating about gold and silver, they've been in two, they've been in kind of the same traje trajectories, but they've had completely different patterns. Look at the single move down, even though it's made a lot of troughs on the way down, it's really just no, I mean, peak A, one peak A minus, and that's it. It has not been able to rally above the nine period moving average. This is the first time we're looking and saying, hey, let's do a little analysis on that. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, this is Larry Pazenta. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I was just asked about uh, Twitter. Uh, Twitter is a peak B. It's holding very well. I think that the under-the-radar stocks are now going to hold a lot better, I, this is my thinking, than the really big names. Uh, Twitter's been hammered. I mean, it's gone from the 52 area down to uh, the 9s. Um, sorry, down to the 12s. And I think it's now looking quite good. It's at 1847, holding very well. So if you're in it, I, it, it has a characteristic of making Ds or an E. In the weekly chart, it went to an E back in April uh, of last year. Then it plunged. And, and it's just made a peak D uh, in the October high at 25.25. Now it's starting a new rally from 14.12, and it's in the peak A. What I'm going to say is if you are in it, 16.50 is what you have to watch as, as really key support. 
but this is looking acting quite well. And if the market turns down altogether, and the Nasdaq actually pulls back, and Twitter is holding at eighteen above eighteen dollars and twenty cents, that's really good action. So I think if you want, you can start a small position and just build on the position and with higher highs, but not lower highs. You want to make it, break it, and you want to go above yesterday's of 1889. I would add another small position if you're already in it there, and I'd make the original position the stop, and on on the entry point is the stop, and on the, any new position, I'd have a very small 60 cent stop on 18 cents, start, 18 and a half dollar stop, not bad. And let's see what happens because it might hold very well under these conditions. So I think I'm about to run out of time. I'm not quite used to uh, how it works here. I want you to just quickly say the VIX index at this particular point, I don't think it's going to really spiral to the upside until the Dow gets to about a minus 90, if it does, to a minus 90. The S&P needs to be down at about a minus 10. And the NASDAQ has to be in Q. Let me go to the continuous contract trading right. Oops, in Q. And I'll be back at 11 o'clock to do my show. You've got uh, thank you, Tommy Jr., for a great three-minute update at 9 o'clock. And then at 10 o'clock, Tom does an update. And then you've got, oh, the NQ's down at 11. I, I think we might be making some kind of a top here, a short term. We'll see. Um, we, we're preparing for that. We are still short the Dow for quite a while now. Uh, Basil Chapman, sitting in for Larry for this event to trade what you see. I'll be back with my, my show, the Tiger Technician's Hour, straight after the 11 o'clock period. Thanks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.